So we're live. We're live. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all ages. We are not the New Age Outlaws, but we are the Ashy Knuckles team. And here today, we are talking about the 2023 and beyond part two. We're going to continue on from the last pod, which dropped yesterday or today, recorded yesterday, dropped today. We're going to talk about what we were finishing up on yesterday. And I believe we left off with uh, Mirab against Aljo and the future with that. The Bantamweight division, 135 pounds. Where do you guys see this going? Who wants to go first? I mean, I'll go first. Mm. When it comes from Mirab, Mirab's obviously not going to fight Aljamain. I think we went over that yesterday. Uh, he's just going to kind of sit back and see what happens with the the next title fight. It's do we know when Henry Cejudo versus Aljamain is? Yes, we do. Um, isn't May that 6th. in um, in Jersey? May sixth. May sixth. We're going to catch that one somewhere in Colorado. That's all, all I right. know. Yeah. Sports bar in Colorado. Got it. We, we we're going to watch Mighty Mouse fight and do his thing, and then we're going to go Saturday night somewhere in Colorado. Probably indulge in the festivities. You know what I'm saying? Correct. And watch nice. some good MMA. After we watch some good MMA the night before. Live, though. Yes. It's going to be a good time. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's going on the night before? <laughs> oh, oh, is that the one? Yes, it is the one. It is the one. It is the oh, one. Okay. It's the one nice. in the, the, you know, the one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you guys can see us on some uh, Amazon Prime. I mean, yeah, uh, in the crowd. That. <laughs> Mighty Mouse is fighting. Uh, what's her name? Her oh, name? Oh, uh, she got no booty, but she be backing it up. What's her name? What's her name? Stamp. Stamp. Stamp Fairfax. Yeah, she got no booty, but she can back it up. Hey, that girl is vicious. And motherfucking Rod Tang. Oh my god. Like, I'm there. Is that, a, is that to a go... Muay Thai fight for uh, Rod Tang? Is it Muay Thai or is it uh, MMA? I hope so. I, don't know I actually want to say it's kickboxing. Oh, okay. Can you throw knees? <laughs> nah. Because, see, when it comes to kickboxing, I'm, I'm confused with that because. I had watched this movie called The Kick- Kickboxer a long time ago with John claude Van Damme. And Tong Po was wrecking everybody with his kickboxing, but that's that Muay Thai. So I don't know how it goes, man. I don't know the rules no more. All I know is that Rod Tang, he ain't no joke. Tong Po don't want to see none of him. Hell no. Nah. All right, but let's get back to it. Let's get yes. back to business. The actual factual... MMA talk. We got Mirab. It's definitely number one contender. Like, okay, let me ask you guys a question. Can Sean O'Malley beat Mirab? Nah. I don't think so either, no. No. Okay. Remember, we have audio listeners, not just video listeners so we have to say something i know i want to shake my head too (laughs) trust me i want to shake my head too and be like no (laughs) but listen yes no i don't think not listen in my opinion dude mirab is probably getting tested by usada right now for his (laughs) performance two weeks ago has it been two weeks two weeks right two weeks ago yeah about Bro, a little bit less than two weeks, but yeah. This man went for damn near fifty takedowns. Was it forty nine? It was up there, yeah. yeah it was forty nine. Only eleven landed, but still forty nine takedowns. He got the record. That's, That's crazy, a lot. man. That's a lot. And he still had some gas in the tank too, man. It's, yeah, like, he could he could have gone on for like another three rounds and been straight, at least. 
Testing them for that EPO. Yeah, you know. Well, EPO. Know. All the all the enhancers. I mean, you know, I don't know if he's the CEO of EPO. We don't know, but God dog, this man, <laughs> he was going for like a million takedowns, and they didn't all land. But still, he went for him. That's the whole part about it. Like forty nine attempts. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, most dudes be tired after like five, but he went for forty nine. Now, okay, so if he's not okay, if you're in the gym and you're training with this guy that's a champion and you're beating him, wouldn't you be like, nah, we fighting just because it's just because you champ, but still. I beat you every day in, in class and in practice. You know what I mean? He should have some kind of feeling towards that. But he doesn't. So does that mean Aljamain is smoking this dude in training all the time? Not necessarily. I don't think so. I, I think it's just code of the gym. And you've seen what like breaking the gym code and bro code in gyms does to certain fighters. Yeah. Get ousted, get whatever. I, I think it takes a certain I think it takes two certain types of fighters to be like, hey look, we can put all that aside and let the best man win. And I respect that the same, but at the same time I also understand, you know, you know these guys too well. And to take advantage of it is kinda dirty. Well, in my opinion, like, damn. If Mirab his first fight against Jan, he had a blueprint, obviously, due to the fact that uh, Aljamain fought him twice. Mm -hmm. So, is the first fight... Because you guys remember the first fight with Jan and Aljamain. Aljamain came out the gates blazing with that same pace. He just couldn't keep it up. Is that how hard they go in training camp? Like, is that is that how it is? Because if that... If that's like the indicator, then that might be possibly one of the greatest bantamweight fights ever if we get that one to happen. If they both can keep up that pace, that might set the bar for the future. Like all these younger guys coming up, like, oh, I got to have this energy to keep going and doing everything. So I hope that's where they go in the gym. If they're training like that, oh my goodness. What do you guys think? Uh, I, th I think we'll never see that fight happen. And it, I, it has to do more with, I think, the friendship, unless they have some kind of, um, you know, Kobe and Masvidal falling out. Then we'll get that fight. Or maybe they're just building up all this stuff to do that, to make money. So I, I, I don't see that fight ever happening. The only way it happens is if one of them leaves the gym. That's the only way it happens. One of them leaves the gym, then it can happen. Other than that, I don't think they will. I think it'll be a Rory McDonald versus GSP type situation. Which is unfortunate because I honestly think that Rory McDonald had all the potential to be champ. And be a dominant champ in his prime in the UFC. But he held himself back. Yeah, okay, so. Even though we got B-Woods not here yet. And I know he wants to definitely talk about it. So I will address some random points real quick. We got Marlon Vera fighting Corey Sanhagen coming up this weekend. That also adds to the intrigue of the Bantamweight division. We got, yep. in what, like a few months, we have Aljamain defending against a former champion who vacated the title? Henry Cejudo against Al Joe. We could gloss on that one real quick. We just touch up on. It. How do you guys feel about Cejudo coming back? He rightfully deserves a title shot because he wasn't defeated, right? He's just trying to make a play, and in my opinion, it didn't work. It failed on him. So now he's here. 
But then again, he might have needed just some time off. What kind of player are you talking about? Oh, he made a money paid. play. He was trying to get paid. Oh, okay. That's retire sweet. and then okay. like come out of retirement and get paid. Yeah, the whole time he was off, that's why he was trying to hype a big fight, kind of force their hand into signing him back at a big deal. And that's why it took him so long to actually sign him back. And then finally they were like, I think he finally found out that he was irrelevant in that situation other than a coach, which props on him. Like, while he's been coaching on the sidelines, he's been doing some work. Great coach. Great coach. So... Him coming back, to me, as much as I hate the king of cringe for his cringeworthiness, he is a great fighter. This is probably the toughest test for Aljo, in my opinion. And I actually like Cejudo in this fight. I also like Cejudo in this one. I haven't seen Cejudo fight too much, you know. Um, when I started watching, is was his... Last fight, his retirement fight against um, Dominic Cruz over here in Jacksonville. And, I mean, just, uh, you know, I went back and watched the highlights. Never watched any full fights or anything. And, I don't know. I really don't have an opinion on that one. Just because, like, he's he's good at wrestling, right? But, I mean, it's, but so is Aljamain. So do you think they're going to go down? Is it going to be a wrestling match, grappling, or are they going to be standing up? I hope it goes standing because it would be very intriguing because Cejudo, he's a gold medalist in wrestling. Like You don't get those for free. It ain't no <laughs> judges like say, like, oh, you won. No, you earned those. Gold medals, you earned those. I mean, mm-hmm. look at Daniel Cormier. How many he got? Exactly. I don't know. He got I really, zero. Yeah. He's got zero. I was going to say, I don't think he has any. He ain't got yeah. no gold medals. He's very salty about that. Well, like I was saying, like, yeah, so Hudo might be the shorter guy coming in here. But he's also going to be the guy that's lower center of gravity to do all these things with wrestling. And... I'm just going to be honest, like, pound for pound, I do not see Aljo being better than Mighty Mouse. That's just my no. opinion. No. I'm, I'm trying to do some some <laughs> wicked MMA math right now. Like, yeah, can Aljo land a head kick on Suhudo? Absolutely. That's how I see him putting him away if he goes with, like, a finish. Is a head kick. I don't see him landing a, a punch or something, but I see a head kick to end the fight against Cejudo because, you know, he's short. He's going to be going for, I don't know what kind of takedowns he's going to go for. I'm pretty sure he's, like, outmatched by two weight classes in reality because Cejudo should be a 125-er, period. Yes. He should be fighting at 125 pounds. But granted, he probably can't make that weight cut. It's probably harsh on him. So he's taking his chances at 135 where he's fighting dudes that are way bigger than him with power for that weight class. Like, I don't see him ever going up to 145, his natural weight class probably, without cutting the weight and winning a title. I, I, I just don't see it. He might be able to beat somebody, but no. He's not beating Volk. Now, with Aljo, Mirab, those two, I do not see him. He might be able to out-wrestle Aljo, but I do not see it with Mirab. I feel like these matchups, that's why they're there. There's matchups. Sean O'Malley, I see Cejudo running through. Yeah, Sean O'Malley runs through, or, or sorry, Cejudo runs through Sean O'Malley easily. Like, I, like when he went up to him and said, "Yo, you suck," I was like, <laughs> hey, "Damn, that's fucked up." But either way, those two right now, somebody's gonna leave town if Aljo somehow beats Cejudo, which can happen. It can happen. He has multiple ways. He might be able to defend enough wrestling. To where it, it goes to a stand-up fight. And I feel Aljo's stand-up is way better. 
But if Sahudo's wrestling is that good and he could control Aljo on the ground, obviously, Captain Obvious says that Sahudo will win. But does he stay fighting? I don't know. Because up next, you got Mirab. I'm pretty sure. And we're, the title of this episode is 2023 20, and Beyond Part 2, right? Mm-hmm. So, with that said, later on, okay, we have Sohudo versus Algermain in May. May 6th to be exact. Say, for example, they don't take too much damage and they set up this fight for like August or September. If Aljamain lost the title to Sahudo, he's not getting an instant rematch. I don't think so at all. No. No, 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 no. Because his two title defenses, one was a really close fight against Jan. And people were saying otherwise the decision, blah, blah, blah. And then he fought a uh, broke shoulder TJ Dillashaw. Mm-hmm. So he ha- he doesn't have the warrant to def- like get an instant rematch like some of these other guys have at the respective weight classes and the champions that they have. Oh, I know Brian's definitely gonna want to talk about uh oh girl, what's her name, Valentina? Yes, Grasso. That's I know. It. <laughs> we'll save that for Brian whenever the hell he shows up. I'm gonna text him shortly once I get done talking with this. But with the whole Aljamain and Sahudo fight, if Sahudo wins, he's definitely fighting Mirab next. This year, at least. Oh. 23, 23 and beyond, he's definitely fighting Mirab. Sean O'Malley, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know because, in my opinion, the performance that Mirab put on against Peter Jan compared to Sean O'Malley's uh, performance, unless they both fight each other, that would be a good one. One and two fight each other. I just don't know, man. Because I feel Mirab put on the better performance where it was like, yo, he beat Peter Jan to where Sean O'Malley was just like, ah, there's no controversy. He, he lost. He lost. There's no controversy. He knew he lost. Mirab he knew he won lost. that fight, right? Mirab yes. won that fight. We, we all knew he won that fight. <laughs> Like, me, I was going like, come on, Peter, do something. He ain't do something. He wasn't the same, man. But Sean O'Malley and them, it was just like, oh, shit, where's this going? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? And even Sean O'Malley, he looked fucked up. (laughs) He looked fucked up (laughs) when they're saying, you know what I mean, who's going to win? So, Uh, Mira was just like, any judge. Mira was just like, yep, I got this, dub. He was like, dub. <laughs> and even Aljo was in the corner. But just imagine this. Okay. Okay. Like, we could we could derail real quick because we don't have too many options yet. But what if Peter Jan never threw that knee in the first fight with Aljo? Where would this be going right now? Like, what if? Then Mirab would have got his title shot. <laughs> That, that's as simple as it is. Mirab would have got his title shot if he never threw that knee. That's how I feel. I think Jan would probably still be champ. He'd have that confidence and that swagger still. And he. And I think Mirab would have worked his way up there. Because Aljo became, would have became like gatekeeper status after that if he never threw that knee. Because he lost that fight if that knee wasn't thrown. Period. Yeah, man. Chris? He's um. If Peter Yan never threw that knee, do y'all remember what ranking Mira was at when that fight happened? Let Let me run with it, Chris. You good? Let me run with yeah. it. Yeah. Let me run with it real quick. Okay. Peter Yan never throws that knee. He beats Aljo clean. Finishes him probably somewhere in that round or the following round for sure the towel gets thrown in something he finishes him right he defends the title against Corey Sanhagen the following fight I believe bam one title offense fights TJ Dillashaw who probably will go into this fight with another hurt shoulder if you know what I mean if everything's right 
he probably gets tore up worse than he would against Aljamain. Honestly, with Peter Yan. Am I right, guys? Yeah. So, Peter yep. Yan has two title defenses. And then he fights Sean O'Malley. Now, this is where things get crazy. They're fighting in Abu Dhabi. They're fighting five rounds. I don't know where these judges are going to go. You get what I'm saying? Because Peter Yan's supposed to be their boy. And mm-hmm. you got two extra rounds to judge off of. Now, I don't know what these judges are doing. I don't know if they're eating Doritos. I don't know if they're eating <laughs> Slim Jims. I don't know if they're drinking. I don't know what exactly they're doing. I don't know if they're drinking Zephyr Hills water. I don't know exactly what they're doing while they're watching this. I don't know if they're tweeting. I don't know if they're sending text messages. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if they're on Tinder, swiping this way or the other. I don't know how it works. But I'm just saying, I don't know what these judges are doing. These guys are credentialed, obviously. So we know where they stand with the three-round fight with Peter Yan and O'Malley. So where do they go if there's another two rounds? Because honestly, I think if Peter Young got two more rounds, you know what I mean? He might make Skittles fly out the rainbow. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Would have gotten the finish. I don't know. And that could be I, it, his third title right. defense. And then finally, he fights Mirab, right? Catches the L. That's, that's my whole scenario of if that knee never landed. Or is never thrown. I mean, I I can agree with most of that. I don't know if Sean O'Malley actually got that title shot, though. I think he would have got the title shot. There, there would have been some like, other things. Because you would have had around. to see who Sean O'Malley fought to get in that position. Because the only reason why he's entitled contention talks now is because of the Yon fight. Yeah, that's true. Who did he yeah. beat beforehand? Nobody, right? Uh, there no, was no, a, just Pedro threw him Munoz, in there. And that was a um was that a no contest? The Pedro Munoz fight? Yes. Where he Okay. Yes, that was the eye poke. So he had his uh mid card guy and then he got the actual title not the title, but the number one dude. I'm pretty sure Peter Yan was like, Man, who is this cat? I'll smoke him. I'll smoke <laughs> Skittles real quick. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you think you called him Rainbow Poodle or something? Yeah. Yes. I want to welcome uh, B Woods to the pod. Thank you for showing up today, sir. You're muted. No, what up? We were just talking about what would have happened if Peter Yan never landed that knee against Aljo. And I gave a whole timeline. Sounds like a great timeline, but we don't know. But for facts, though, he would have fought. Corey Sanhagen next. Oh, yeah. He's, in that uh, timeline. He didn't need Aljo. He, Aljo's not champion. Yeah, Aljo's not champion. So he would have fought Corey Sanhagen next and then probably TJ Dillashaw because Dillashaw would have been healed up by then. And then maybe, I don't know, who do you think if? Like I think if. he would have fought. Um, I think he would have fought Cheeto and you not Cheeto? Sean O'Malley. Oh, that yeah. would have been a good one. That would have been a good one. That's a good possibility at that yeah. time. Well, technically, what we got coming up this weekend, in fact, is... It's like this whole division is so retarded with the whole Mirab not wanting to fight Aljo. So we got Marlon against Corey Sanhagen. And I'm pretty sure the winner of that is going to fight for the title next. Honestly, that's how I see it. Be- well, actually, who knows? Because if Aljo wins, he'll probably fight Sean O'Malley next. Now, if Cejudo wins, we don't know what's going to happen. Because you got like, you could flip a coin from there. Because if Marlon beats Sanhagen or Sanhagen beats Marlon, either one of those two, right? I, I still think they go for Marab in that situation, though. 
Oh no no! If, if, if Aljo's not the the champion, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, don't I know. do because then they got the they got that storyline. No, no no no! They got no, that no. storyline. Get it back for his bro. Here's my counter argument for storylines, because on Saturday, after Leon Edwards won. Dana White could easily have said, okay, this weekend uh, on uh, April 8th, when this fight's happening, if Jorge Masvidal wins, he could fight Leon Edwards for his title. He could have done something like that easily. He could have built up that, that card tremendously just with that stipulation. But instead, he said, hey, man, I like this boy over here, this uh, Kobe Covington. Put them in. Whoop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the, the problem with saying that Masvidal would get it, though, after a win this weekend, is Masvidal, besides being in Miami this weekend, is pretty much irrelevant. It could have built up that card for more uh, promotion. I'm not yeah. a promoter. I'm just saying, like, look. No, that makes sense. Tune in for this one. If he wins, he's getting yeah. the next title shot. Against the man that he gave him, what what was it called? A three-piece and a soda? Two-piece, but, you know, he's getting nice backstage. Whatever piece and a soda, I'm pretty sure uh, Leon wants his refund back from it. Because, shit, <laughs> he got lit up from it. Like, I mean, I didn't order this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, that's what Leon's Order 172. For. Order 172. Leon's trying to avoid the... Kobe won and go straight for Masvidal if he beats Gilbert. And I mean, to be fair, if he beats Gilbert, that does kind of put him in title contention again. But I don't think it's next shot. But I mean, because I mean, what he lost is what last four or five. In reality, though, you look at the top five of this division. You got Kamaru at number one. You got Kobe at number two. Mm-hmm. You got Hamza at number three. Bilal at number four and Gilbert Burns at number five. So, and Shavkat at number six. Okay. So, who is taking the Shavkat fight, though? That's the real thing with the welterweights. I know we just, th- we just got off track real quick with the whole thing. We were talking about the Bantamweights and stuff. But, ideally, you'd want somebody with some steam going right now. You you definitely need Shamayev to actually make weight and fight somebody. Shamayev, uh, Dana White's already announced that he's going to be fighting at uh, middleweight next. Exactly, and I I really don't. He's fighting Vittori. I'll be back. I think so. I'll be back. Oh yeah, that. Yeah, and then for Shavkat, they're trying to make a deal between uh, Belial and Shavkat. Yeah, fight. I read it. Yeah, I saw that they were trying to make that fight next for um, you know, uh, Bilal and Shavkat. Which, who do you think is gonna um win in that one if it happens? That's a rough one for me because I do think that Shavkat was humanized in his last fight, but I like, I like uh. Jeff Neal's hands more than I like uh, <clears throat> Belial's hands. So, yeah, I think that's what happened with that one. I'm also, I always underestimate, underestimate Muhammad. So, like, every fight he goes into, <laughs> he proves me wrong constantly. Yeah, so he it, had some hands during one. that Sean Brady fight, too. Yes. So That was surprising. I, it's just one of those things where it's like he's someone I constantly underestimate. Even though I do think that he's a good fighter. I just constantly underestimate him against a lot of other fighters. So I kind of want to do it again and say Shavkat's probably going to walk away with that one. But, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, I think, you know, the same... I'm in the same boat as you with Bilal. Like, I always under... I don't... Don't really like I don't not take him seriously, but like he's just his fights are kind of underwhelming. 
for me, except for the Sean Brady fight. That's where I was actually surprised with him. Or may, I could just be uh, being biased against the uh, when he fought against Vicente Luque. Did he? Was that the fight I'm thinking of? Was him? In, did Vicente win that one or no? He got you, wrestled. You are definitely being biased with the yeah. uh, Vicente <laughs> Luque fight because I was also on your same side. I was going for Vicente Luque against Bilal, mm-hmm. but. He is a, uh, how can I put it, man? He's great, but he's not great all at the same time. Like, he's good. Exactly. But once you start fighting these dudes that can counter things, then he's not that good. But Vicente Luque does have a win over Bilal, so they're one and one currently. That's right, yeah. Vicente Luque, his rise to the top of uh, the top five was stopped by Bilal. I'm not sure if he fought since then. I could be wrong, but Bilal's ascent, as you would say, was definitely done by stopping Wonder Boy. Stephen I Thompson. think he, he got stopped by Jeff Neal. Who? Or was it Neil Magny? Who? I always get the two confused. Oh, uh, Vicente. When he got knocked out. he. I'm not going to say either one because it might have been Jeff Neal, actually. Jeff Neal's pretty solid, man. He's got some hands. But with the whole Bilal Ascension thing, yeah, he deserved every spot he has. He has not lost. The only... Loss, you could say, is against the current champion with uh, Leon Edwards. And, and that though, builds for another story right there, too. Even though it's some eye pokes. Yeah, he's got some googly eyes. Yeah, his eyes are huge. Yeah. But Jeff Neal knocked him out. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Mark. Leon Edwards was dominating that fight before the eye pokes to begin with. Yeah, given it was a legit eye poke. But... Leon Edwards was on his way to winning that fight, I feel, unless Bilal did something crazy. Like, ah, I don't know, man. Like, his wrestling defense after against Kamaru, it, it proved something. And I heard something the other day, earlier today maybe, is like when you're the champion, you're 30% more confident coming into the fight. And did you guys see how confident Leon was? That boy was good. He was good. I didn't want him well, to I mean, win because I'm USA, even though Kamaru don't represent the USA like that, but he fights out of the USA. So I was going with somebody that represented us. Leon looked good in that fight. He he did his thing. The UK he got prob- one. He probably got some confidence also because there was those talks out that he was training with Habib for wrestling training. Who? Leon? So, Leon, yeah. Oh, shit. So, he's so, getting I know that. He, so he that, was getting that'll scooped. That'll give you in, some confidence. He was getting scooped in practice, is what yeah. you're telling me. He was getting scooped. And he probably got a couple wins out of that, and he was like, oh, I, if I can handle this, I can handle Usman. <laughs> yeah, if you're training with uh, these Dagestani warriors, then you're definitely good. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Right, You're definitely good. I was gonna ask B Woods what he thought about that, but um, <laughs> no, no, no. we got we got we gotta let him uh, talk about the whole bantamweight debacle we got going on right now because, like, dude, it's not like every day. You got the opportunity to fight for a title. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Yes, yeah. I understand. That's that's your boy. That's your man's. Y'all train together. Y'all y'all brothers, basically. But some way, so, somehow, it's got to it's got to change. Like, look, one of us got to go up and wait, <laughs> or something, or go down one or the other. So, that's, what's next for Murad? Who do you think? If, you know, he's not going to fight for the championship. It, it's more of like 
what if happens. If Aljamain wins, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a whole little little thing with the whole top five. If Aljamain somehow beats Cejudo, I think Sean O'Malley's going to fight for his title next, right? We'll probably get that one like on August or September. No, no, that's too quick. We'll probably get it like October or November, something like that. And Emirab will fight the winner of Marlin and Sanhagen. That's how I see it. Feel what that. about the other um, Nurmagomedov, Umar? Is he? Uh, he's still in the UFC. Which one was the one that knocked out um, Ben Henderson the other day? That was Usman That's Nurmagomedov. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Umar, Umar's still here. Which is the one that got the the good kicks? Is that Umar? Well, they both got good kicks. Usman and Umar. They both have good kicks. But I think you might be referring to Umar, the one that's in the UFC. Mm -hmm. He's got some good kicks too, man. Like, I don't know. This band and weight division, like, if you look at the top 15, like, Jesus Christ. The top 15 is nuts. Like, number 12 is the dude that I will be backing, Adrian Yanez. Mm -hmm. Whoever he's fighting next, I got him winning. So he's fighting Rob Font. Woo wee! That's a banger oh, right geez. there. That 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 fight. That on fight. April eighth, yeah, he's fighting um Rob Font on in the Miami card. God dog. That. What? Wait 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 wait. So you telling me? You telling me this fight could have been in Jacksonville? But, Could have, but Miles Vidal's bigger in Miami. What's our uh, dude's name? DeSantis? Damn it, man! <laughs> you could have had this one here and you didn't know it. God, dog. It's still in his Shit. state. I know, wins. but still. <laughs> We're your biggest city, man. Like, damn. Yeah. Okay. You, you gotta admit, Miles Vidal in Miami, That's there's nothing bigger. Oh no, for no, 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 that's that's money right there for the UFC. But dude, Adrian Yanez, oh my god, I'm backing him, man. I'm backing him. That's my 135er. And Rob Font, Rob Font's gonna stand and bang with him too. Oh my god. Yay, fight of the night. You heard it here first. Mosey P yeah, said no, I... fight of the night. I mean, if he beats Rob Font. That oh, off jumps him from number 12 all the way into, like, six. Top five, probably. Nah. Uh, he won't be in the top five, but nah. that'll put him, like, in six, seven area. Well, it depends, though, because Marlon Vera and Sanhagen, they got their fight. Somebody's going to get bumped back somewhere, <coughs> some way. Well, I mean, even if, so if uh, Marlon loses to Sanhagen, that puts him in Four fifth. Mm -hmm. uh, Sanhagen loses. That could drop him, maybe. So if he wins over Font, then yeah, he could possibly jump into the top five. That's my dude, though, man. Adrian Yanez, I like him. That's, that's but even at number six, you can already start talking about title shots. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially in this if division, he, if he beats Rob Font, he just needs mm -hmm. one more. He just needs right. one more. Do I see him beat Sean yeah. O'Malley? Absolutely. Actually, I see that fight being very technical and very beautiful. Him against Peter Jan, a beautiful fight. Beautiful fight. Him against Mirab, I see Mirab smothering him, putting that pressure on him with like 900 takedowns. I see that <laughs> fight going towards Mirab. But that's only if Mirab does not fight for the title. Like, that's the crazy thing. Like, so if Al Jermaine wins the title, what happens? He's going to vacate and move up? No. You know what he's going to do? He's going to try fight Volkanovski for a super fight. So he could be uh, one of those guys. How many super fights can Volkanovski be in, man? Like, geez. 
Well, all I the mean, ones you want. <laughs> I mean, to be, to be honest with you, bro, Volkanovski could be lightweight champion right now, and I wouldn't argue with anybody about that. Not at all. The, okay. Since we're talking about 2023 and beyond, do you guys see Aljamain possibly beating Volkanovski? Maybe even Yair if he wins the title? Matchups. Volk- Volkanovski, no. I don't see that happening. No. Yair? Yes. Possibly. Yes. Yeah. I feel him and Yair are like the same, <clears throat> like the same size. Mm. It's just, I feel Aljamain has the kryptonite to beat Yair because y'all saw Max Holloway out wrestle this dude. When y'all see yeah, Max yeah. do fucking <laughs> grappling, right? He already knew what he had to do. He understood the assignment to win the match. Was it ugly? Absolutely. Did he win? Yes. And with Aljamain, I feel he'll do the same with uh, Yair. But with Volk, he can't get away with that bullshit. Volk, gonna, Volk might knock his ass out, honestly. Say if Aljo loses, he moves up to 155 and fights Calvin Cater first. They're not in the same camps. That's uh the Boston uh what are they called? Mm-hmm. New England Cartel, whatever they're called. Yeah. Them. Yeah, I forget uh, that. Sarah Longo. So that that's that's a good little storyline. He might fight Josh Emmett. You never know. Huh? I just find the Calvin Cater one a little more interesting than the Josh Emmett one. I, you know what? What matchup is like intriguing for me though is if like Aljo went up and fought Brian Ortega. Yes, I could be with that. Yes, like that's like one of those like, oh, really? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to tickle my fancy, yeah. huh? You want to tickle my <laughs> fancy, huh? You're telling me that we got this this stylistic matchup right here, huh? Huh? Who's standing? No, that's a good better? matchup. It was like they it both all could would be stand up. They both could grapple really good. So like who's better? Alright. I might so, take Ortega on that one. So currently us three are here and we're waiting for Mr. B. Woods to return again for the third time. He's snacking. To give us his gracious presence <laughs> of his Mirab <laughs> and Aljamain situation. So, with that said, we'll just look at the pound for pound rankings. Currently, it's John Jones, right. Volkanovsky, Makachev, and Leon Edwards at number four. Do you guys agree with that? No. no. I don't agree with Leon Edwards being higher than Israel. Well, I don't think that Islam should be that high up either. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, if you look I, at it. I also don't. What? Pound for Look pound. at the title defenses. Okay, so you feel, you guys feel like if you're on the pound for pound, you should be a champion, right? I mean, not necessarily. Because I also think that Alex Pereira doesn't deserve to be on the pound for pound. And he's up there at number six. He's champ. He moved up one spot. All right. Are you guys ready for Mr. B. Woods to give us his Mirab yes. and Aljamain? Is the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneer ready himself? He's definitely not. He, he is definitely not a Tampa Bay Buccaneer guy. I will. I will attest for that. I will attest for that. We I'm are who dads you. over here. We are who dads <laughs> over here, buddy. Oh, oh, no, oh. he going with I'm that uh, Israel that style bender. He going with the last Sir. style bender. That's right. He's taking that title back from Alex Pereira, who will be removed from number six in a powerful pound rankings. 
No. <laughs> All right, but 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 B B B, check it out. Yo, what up? We have been. Mm, I don't know what you would say. We have been just chit chatting, really, about right. what if. We started off with the whole what if Peter Yan never landed that knee to Aljamain and what would happen. You remember Peter Yan, he hit him with the illegal knee. And Mm -hmm. that was his whole descent of his whole career, in my opinion. Peter Yan has yet to win. I think the second fight was the the point where his career took a a shit. Because he was beating them. He was, to be fair, to Aljo and all his accomplishments after that first fight, Aljo was getting the dog shit whipped out of him in that first one. Absolutely. So, like, if that fight continues, because what the, what the knee happened in the third or the fourth? fourth. Mm-hmm. I know, I know it was like it was it either was, yeah. third or championship rounds. And it wasn't came, early, it wasn't early, it wasn't, it wasn't in the beginning of the fight. It, it was, was bopping him, though. He was bopping him. The, the first round, Aljo came out blazing, yes, and then after that, the gas tank went straight to E. True. True. And yeah, it could be a case of he was gassed or he may have had some injuries that we don't know about. But with that being said, he was getting to he was getting tuned up pretty good. Like that fight was going one direction and one direction only. And I ain't talking about music. If he would have <laughs> he would continue the same momentum. I don't even see that fight going to the cards. I think he would have got a TKO finish. We was talking about that earlier. It's like, yeah, it's it's pretty sure like Peter Yan was going to finish him in that fight regardless. But he landed that knee and that changed the whole trajectory of everything. Everything for the whole Bantamweight division, if you think about it. Like, I'm not going to bash Aljo. But mm-hmm. he did defend against Peter Yan. We was there. Mm-hmm. We almost went to sleep watching that fight. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean almost? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I, I think I had a dream doing. I think I had a dream doing that fight. <laughs> all I know is we saw Kay Hansen in front of us with the wife beater on and stuff. And that's yes. all I got to say. Mm-hmm. Right she before had, she got cut, she had a she black eye. No. Chilling with her little boot thing, all beat up. Yes. And then we uh, saw uh, the great Joaquin fight Buckley. with Gilbert, Gilbert Burns. Oh, Joaquin Buckley at the bathroom? So him, yeah, we saw him in the bathroom. Yeah. That, that, that don't was, sound right. Let's, 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 like, let's, let's go backwards. We <laughs> saw him in line. We saw him in line. We saw him in line. Yeah. Y'all reminiscing. We saw him in line. Hey, he looked mad as hell. He was, like, waiting in line, too. Shit. You know what I mean? But, okay, we saw that fight. Then we saw, this is what messed us up. The whole Gilbert Burns against Jemiah fight. That fight was so good to only see a grappling masterpiece by Aljamain followed by it. I'm talking trash when I say um, the fight was boring because realistically speaking to me, it wasn't. It It was like, you know, it was a grappling masterpiece. Exactly. But I think the energy got sucked out of the room. All the chaos that we saw before with, like you said, like Jemayev and Burns going completely ham. And that was that was like um, watching a jiu-jitsu match after watching Forrest Griffin, Stephen Bonner. Exactly. You can't, like, it's, it's, it's just two different things. Like, you, you all the... Energy in the room, all the uh, screams, your voice is hoarse, you don't get third beer. You know what I mean, like everything is just third beer. Right. Like, you, you saw you <laughs> at least your beer. third beer. At you like you might find beer. somebody else's beer that was sitting there. You like I can't get up. I can't move. I'm sorry, bro. I got I got <laughs> <laughs> this yours? No, ain't you okay, mine. Mine. Right. Yeah, it was um that that fight did change like you said, the trajectory of two people's career and the legacy of two fighters' career because 
Peter Jan was the boogeyman for a long time in Bantamweight. Like, he was the guy that nobody wanted to face. He was the guy who was considered to be a robot, like, invincible. His defense was considered to be impregnable. Like, no one had an answer. And his road up to that all Joe fight, that title fight, he was just destroying everybody. Like, Jan seemed to be an um, unstoppable force. Um... But like I think what you said about being champion and them having thirty percent more confidence, maybe something to that. Um, because Aljo looked in the second fight, he knew what worked, and he stuck to just that, and he didn't deviate from that game plan. He was like, I can, I can engage this guy in grappling, keep him on the ground, backpack him, ride this time, and you know maybe if he makes a mistake, force submission. To get a few ground and pound strikes here. Um, I can win this fight, and he didn't deviate from that. And in that, he was able to get a pretty convincing victory over Pewter Young. And Pewter, since then, has uh, pewed out. Like, he really didn't turn to that aura that he had before of invincibility. He was just smoking guys before that first Aljo fight, including, the, I mean, that knee was nasty. If we were playing like Tekken, or if it was a street fight, you know he's up out of there. But they got there's rules in MMA that they teach you before you fight. Now. They go over those rules. It's a sport. And um, he's like, I, I guess I don't I, I don't know if you know like once a guy like that, like a, a guy that's considered unbeatable, once they lose, which I'm gonna keep a close eye out um, for some of these fighters that we've been given. A lot of um, a lot of credit to that's this that we're saying that they, they could potentially be champion. I want to take a look at how they perform after some lackluster performances, or not, or some performances where they don't look so invincible. Because I think that might give some of the other competitors a little bit more confidence against them. And I'm talking about you, Shafkat. I want to see how he performs <laughs> after that Jeff Neal fight, oh, and boy. also. Also, I want to know how Hamza Chemayev performs after that Gilbert Burns fight. It's like, well, they, there I is mean, a, he did perform well against Holland. Well, he did. That was a grapple heavy. That was only grappling. He didn't get hit. Where he got he got hit a lot in that Gilbert Burns fight and wobbled a few times by a guy who's a legitimate one seventy. All right, let's uh, keep on track, though. Let's stay with we the will. Bantamweights. We will let's not keep deviate. Going. So this was this what was my what if predictions if Jan never threw that knee. Jan never threw that knee. He finishes Aljamain. He fights Corey Sanhagen next, defends the, the belt, right? Fights TJ Dillashaw next. Also defends the belt because Dillashaw probably would have came in with something broken. Either way. And then he fights Sean O'Malley in a five-round fight in Abu Dhabi. Does he defend that, that one? Does he get five rounds to actually defend it compared to his three rounds to not defending it? What do you think? Um, in five rounds, it might it, it will definitely be a different fight. Um, you know, you say are you asking Sean O'Malley or Sanhagen or both? No, 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 no. He he defends against Sanhagen and Dillashaw, so he has two defenses, actually three, with the uh, Algermain defense. He finishes oh, Algermain. This is the what if. This is the what if. Okay, you're saying I, that the, the, the next fights after if, if he if, if he doesn't need him, he gets past Aljo. His next two title fights would be versus San Hagen, um, San Hagen and Dillashaw. Then Dillashaw, and I um, I feel he beats both of them, and then he goes on it, to defend against Sean O'Malley and Abu. And they're both they're both five rounders too, right? All of them, obviously. Their, their the title, title defenses, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's uh man, that's a lot of what if um. But if I want to just, you know, um, play Nostradamus in this motherfucker, 
I guess if um, it'll be, it's hard to say that Sanhagen wouldn't take the title to me. They fought though. That's the thing. They yeah. fought for the interim. Went for decision, right? He beat him though. Did. This is uh, was, some bullshit MMA math. That's what I'm... I, I, I don't know. It's, it's tough to say, but I know that... And let's say he does, and he has that momentum riding him where he de- destroys all Joe and he still looks invincible. Yeah, I mean, I can reasonably see him um, walking through both guys. <clears throat> this, this is the path that I'm saying that Peter Young could have had. And then him having that... Under, wouldn't, he, wouldn't he still be undefeated? If he didn't lose to Aljo, he was he would keep going, and defend defend, and then he'll fight Sean O'Malley in Abu Dhabi. But yeah, that would be a, and that would be a huge that would be a much bigger matchup. You have undefeated Purion against Sean O'Malley for five rounds, right? Didn't they fight three rounds? Yeah, three rounds. That's what I'm saying. Like the whole point of this what if is what if he never need him? This is what would happen because <clears throat> obviously he went on this tear and then. He fought Sean O'Malley, and that's when everything changed. He would never he, have he, rematched he, Aljo. He would have never have rematched lose, Aljo. Didn't Peter Young lose a controversial decision in between that? To Sean O'Malley. To Sean, yeah. That's where I'm going to lose. Who else did he lose a decision to? Nobody. Well, Mirab Aljo. recently. And yeah, he Mirab. lose to Mirab. No, um, Aljo, he lost that fight, and then Sean O'Malley he, was controversial. And then he lost. He lost to Mirab. Like he definitely he lost beat. That San, he beat Sanhagen. I, I guess I'm. I'm remembering. Um, this is why I don't like him high on memory. Because I thought he lost a controversial decision to the Peter um, to Sanhagen. No, Peter did, but no, but but he did win that fight, right? Yeah. You know what? You know what? I, I see what happened here. I'm mixing up Sanhagen versus Dillashaw. And Dillashaw won a controversial decision over Sanhagen, and I thought yeah. Sanhagen should have won that fight. That's what I'm getting mixed up. Yeah, yeah I think if, if, if we're going to do that, yeah, um, we might be talking about Pure to being the greatest band of weight of all time if that knee doesn't happen. Because I, I, I think he's a favorite in five rounds versus all the all three guys, and he's most he's um he's probably likely to win up win all three. No, we haven't seen um we haven't seen Mr. Um Rainbow Flag fro fro in uh five rounds yet. We call him the Skittle Poodle or something like that. What do you call him? The Rainbow yeah, Poodle. Oh, uh, you're right. That was a three round fight. Yeah, I don't think he's been rounds. a main event. We haven't. He well, has I, been a main event, but he finished the fight. Right. I want like to he's, say. All these fights that he could have went five, he did knock the guy out. And to his credit, look, you don't get paid overtime. You don't get paid for extra rounds. You know what I mean? You you get you'll get paid by the minute. So if you can get your guy out of there, then yeah, that's good. That's 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 shout out to um, Sean O'Malley. That's props. I'm just saying that I, we don't. I don't know what he will look like in five rounds against a guy of that caliber because he wasn't able to put Yan away in three rounds. So chances are he's not going to be able to put him away and then what does he look like is he is he tired is he compromised does he does he then start to become a little bit uh, less sharp and you know maybe get hit with more things that because Pura does seem to turn it up in the championship rounds Mm -hmm. and he kind of like takes this like um i won't i won't say lackadaisical because they're not it's not accurate it's more of a like studied approach to the first few rounds where he just downloads and tries to figure out your patterns, plays very defensive uh, in the first and second round, and then he usually turns it up by the third, fourth, and fifth. Um, not a good not a good strategy if you're fighting a three-round fight. In the five-round fight, it's an excellent strategy, especially if your opponents expend a lot of energy in the first two rounds. So... I think and I think that is more of the detriment to pure than anything else. Is like people have figured that out. And if you can score a lot of points on him in the first two rounds, maybe even do some damage in those first two rounds, you have an edge going into the third. You probably, you're likely to be up two rounds to one, and he has to finish you. 
And I think that's why he's people have been um, edging him out in these decisions. There may be something to that, but yeah, his career would definitely look a lot different had he not need Aljo in the face, man. Like he he was the boogeyman, like I said earlier, and that I think that's likely to continue if he just doesn't knee him in the face and continues to beat beat Aljo down and maybe get the TKO victory or the obvious unanimous decision victory that would have come had uh, Aljo been able to survive fifth round. So either way. Mirab would be champion right now, is what you're saying. Yeah. And we'll be looking at um the the Davishwili era. Yeah. Yeah. We would have seen uh Mirab be the number one guy right Cause now. Because I don't think Mirab's even I don't think Mirab's the number two guy in the division right now. I think he's just one B. You think he's one B? Oh because Aljermaine's number one right now, right? That's it. That's the only reason, and because they're boys. Like they're I want to know what goes on in training camp, because because he's like nah, blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about practice. You know what I'm saying? I feel like practice. the whole Longo camp is like that, though. They are. They are. They are. They're, they're very tight knit group, and they're all jujitsu guys. I mean, they're run by um, Longo and Sarah, so they, you know that their submission skills are good. You know their wrestling pedigree is good with. Um, Wide men and um, the 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 real estate agent. You guys ready? Uh, I you boys to... ready. You guys ready? So, Before... Aljamain going up to featherweight. Who who does he beat? Intriguing. Who does he beat? Intriguing. And, uh, I don't. I don't. Here's the thing. I think Aljo's a pretty decent sized. Phantom weight, like he's not small. No. So, being, I, I don't know if that doesn't help him. They not cutting weight and draining himself. I don't know if that doesn't, you know, give him the same edge that you know moving up from set one seventy to one eighty five. That twitch for Robert Whitaker, it helped him a lot. It gave him, it made him much less chinny, um, and uh, overall more dominant fighter. Like he was able to show more of his skills, be. Be better with combinations, especially that god damn that one two head kick is nasty. And he was just able to just showcase more of what he can do by moving up. And that that sometimes, you know, works in guys' favor. I mean, obviously it doesn't work out all the time, but look good for Robert Whitaker, and I don't see why it wouldn't look um be a good look for Al Jermaine Sterling. Honestly, I don't I don't see Al Jermaine beating Volkanovski. I just don't. I really don't. Who do you yeah, see him beating? That's a tough sell. <laughs> that's a tough sell. Especially after watching what the show that Volk put on against Islam. Exactly. That's a tough sell. Exactly. A very tough sell. Yeah. I mean, he's got opportunities. I feel. Like I said, Brian Ortega and Aljamain, sign me up. I want to watch that fight. Mm -hmm. Max no. Holloway, I feel, is happy and once a fighter gets happy and is comfortable they're not the same no more so my boy Downhill. my boy is he's just there and if he proves me wrong in a few weeks then by all means you still got it bro but if you lose I understand that's my dude like I said Brian Ortega against Aljamain that's a fight I want to see and if Arnold Allen goes in there and bops Holloway, shit, Arnold Allen, shit, he's contender. Yep. He, he might isn't, be that doesn't dude. This, doesn't this fight, like, cater to, not Calvin Cater, but doesn't this fight kind of cater to the skill set of Max Holloway? Because Arnold Allen's mostly a stand-up guy, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And he's mostly um, kickboxer. We'll see what happens, man. Sometimes some dudes get like comfortable. I ain't making excuses. Are you, are, you, are, you trying, are you are you saying that Max Holloway doesn't have that fire in his belly anymore? What are you trying to say? We'll see. I think he's just trying to say there's a new era of Max Holloway. There was Champ Max. Now there's Married Max. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll see. Damn, don't blame it on his wife. I ain't blame no, on his wife. <laughs> it has nothing to do with his wife. It's just happy and content life doesn't give you that hunger and that and that need to feed like it used to. And look, Rocky always had Adrian by his side, and we saw how that played out. <laughs> It's he got different. the shit beat out of him a lot, and then won in the end. Different. <laughs> he, I don't. I don't know if Max got that Apollo to tell him there is no tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? For me. Hey, Rock, there yeah. is no tomorrow. I don't know if he got that. You know what I'm saying? Yancey, maybe. <laughs> but them boys already done. They already done climbed the top of the mountain, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, that, that's true. Wait, hey man. There is a certain amount of, like, fuel that you, if you're at the bottom and you're looking at all the paydays that your competitors are getting at the top, the championship paydays, the pay-per-view points, and no. um, all the accolades and attention that comes with being champion, there is a certain amount of hunger that you can be fueled by to get there. You're making 5000 5, or... 15,000, 15,000, like the 15 to show and the 15 to win. You're seeing guys getting 500,000 to show and win, and you think, okay, I'm better than that guy. There is a certain amount of fuel that's added to your fire mm-hmm. that can be extinguished once you are comfortable. There's one, yeah, once you, one fighter. And once you have two or three million in the bank, now it's, you're not fighting for, to, you're not fighting to eat. You're fighting now just for, you know, it's just, a, it's just a job. Pages. It's just a career. Yeah. Right. Plus, you got only one fighter. But do you think that's his mentality? Do you think that's what Max is thinking? You no, think no. that he's... I don't, I don't see Max as that kind of guy. I, Max has that fighting warrior spirit type persona. Like, he's not the kind of guy who's riding around in, like, Ferraris and, you know, wearing... I mean, he's not, that, he's not the kind of guy that I think that money and... Uh, fame would affect his ability in, inside the uh, arena. I don't mm. think that's it at all. I think it's accomplishments. Like, what? think about Max Holloway. You, you sat there and you already got to the top. You were champ. You were, con- you were already considered the best featherweight to ever live. You know, mm-hmm. even though he himself was like, hey, I haven't beat Aldo yet. Aldo's still the greatest. But he's like, Everyone else outside of that was like, you are the best featherweight there has ever been. You are the greatest. What else is there to accomplish at this point? He's got the money. He's got the accolades. He's had the championship. He's been considered the best featherweight there ever has been. He tested the waters at 155. So that's really the only next thing that he could achieve. But he ain't ready to commit to that yet. There's That's only, all I was looking at it. There's only one fighter that I've ever seen that came back from something like this and be champion, and that is George Foreman. Who? Boxer. Though. George Foreman. But George Foreman. Hold on, wait. There's, there's been some late career resurgence to become champion. We just witnessed one. He's witnessed yes, John he, Jones become. No, no. We just witnessed no. John Jones become. Hell no. He was, John Jones was become heavyweight. That was playing. Well, he became. He became heavyweight champion after vacating and leaving the. I mean, come on! There, as much as we had a lot of confidence in Jones being um, the still being able to compete at a high level, the truth is he was out of the sport for years. Three years. He and and came back to go against number one heavyweight who was who had been active, though he doesn't have as much mixed martial arts experience as John does. To be told, like I didn't, I didn't know. John would get in there and squeeze him out in, you know, less than a minute. I didn't think that was going to happen. I didn't think that's how that fight would go. That's John Jones, though. True, but that's what I'm saying. Like, we have seen it. And then, okay, we'll look at Randy Couture. If we want to go back in history, he came back um, and won the title he after did. losing he the did. title late in his career. So it's 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 definitely possible. It's not a uh, be. Always says that it's hard for a guy to get a second peak in his career. Um, but, but we have seen we have seen some examples of guys coming back. Oh, you know, here's another one. I'll give you one more. 
Here's another one. I mean, look it over a little bit. Well, five champion recently who just lost. To share. He had a late career resurgence to become a champion. He beat Jan Blahovich, uh winning the 205-pound title late in his career. After fighting for the title and then getting, you know, he didn't you know, fall short of the title after he, you know, lost the 205 earlier in his career, he came back to win it. So it's not impossible to see a guy, you know, have that late career resurgence and become champion again. It can happen, but what I feel with Max is more along the lines of like, he will be the mini boss. You got to beat him to get a title shot. That's like the you, ultimate gatekeeper. Hold on, this sounds this sounds personal. You call him Max a gatekeeper right now? No, no, you no just no. call Max a gatekeeper. I'm calling what him. What sounded like? I'm calling I, him I, the ultimate gatekeeper, like mini boss. Like if you beat him, the ultimate you're gatekeeper, definitely getting a title shot. But do you get there and beat him? I don't think so. Like you got to earn that one. So if this dude, like Max, is only lost to who? Volkanovski. Volkanovski. Volk. Connor. Volk. <laughs> hey, that's old shit. Early in his career. That's old yeah. shit. Dustin. <laughs> okay. So that if you good. if you that was a really good fight. he only loses to good people. So what I'm saying Wasn't that about a boy. Five, no. Let me ask Can you this question. Dustin? If he's able to continuously stave off these young hungry lions in his role as the ultimate gatekeeper, doesn't that make him great? Absolutely. If he can stave off all these young, hungry lions from getting to the title, he just can't beat Volk. That puts him in the same category mm-hmm. as a guy I keep mentioning, is uh, Robert Whitaker. Well, Rob is. I think Rob is great. To me, Rob is. He's also. Best he's also. If you don't have no storyline with Izzy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, but, no storyline with Izzy. Once again, it goes to the motivation that Max Holloway has. Like right now. He's going to be one of the best fighters in the division, period. But also, what is he fighting for? He ain't going to get another title shot till Volk l- loses. Last time I checked, those paychecks are really good at the top. They yeah. Are. They are. So he's going he gonna to cruise long. He's going to do it. He just He's enjoying other things while he knows he can't have that title. Of course. And we, know, we all know Father Time is undefeated, man. You only get Correct. so many. You only get so many times to step in that cage. Yo, he's only thirty-one. A, he's only thirty-one. But he's been in some wars. Mileage, people. Mileage. He got like a hundred thousand miles in a Ferrari <laughs> with no oil no, change. No, no, no. Hey, and that's not highway miles. He got city miles and no no <laughs> oil change. We talking about potholes and stop and go, stop and go traffic. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, originally. We were supposed to talk about the 2023 and beyond, right? Mm-hmm. But we have yet to talk about the changing of the guard. And that's where we we're going with for this pod, for the part two. Currently, we have how many new champions? One, two, three, one, least two, four. one, two. I let, uh, Grosso. If, if you're counting uh, interims, then we got a lot of new champions. Almost all of them have changed in the last year. Yeah, yeah. Like in the oh, last wait, six Jones, months. Jones, oh, in the last year. Do you, you oh. consider Jones the champion, even though he didn't beat Ngannou? Yes, he is the champion. We have a lot okay, of so new champions five. coming up right now. Like, literally, if you look six months ago and you see champions, you might have, like, Volkanovski... Moreno, was he champion? Well, Moreno was no, Moreno no, he just, just won it, back. right? He just got yeah, it. Got back. He playing, got out to me. They're playing uh, tennis. They're just like serving a championship back and forth to each other. Pereira. <laughs> Leon Edwards won that one too, right? We got, we got a lot of new champions, but the whole thing about the changing of the guard that we were talking about was the Valentina Shevchenko against Alexa... So. Hold up, wait, wait, wait. I have to pause for a second before something happens because I have one of those devices. Okay, I'm good to talk again. Grasso, yes. Tell me otherwise. She trained that last sequence 
to get that choke to a T. She trained hard for that sequence. And she looked good in the first round. Am I right? Mm-hmm. That whole second, what what, time, what 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 round was it? The fourth round, right? Where uh, Shevchenko missed a spinning back kick and got her back taken real fast, right? That was fourth round. Second mm-hmm. and third round, in my opinion, was going. It was all Shevchenko. She was leading and she was about to win that fight if she ain't with that kick. In my opinion, predominantly, yeah. First round was definitely uh, Grasso. She had her on the stand-up, for sure. But then when uh, Shevchenko decided to start making it a mixed martial arts fight, that's when things changed. But then she got caught. Now, given, do you guys see a rematch with Shevchenko and Grasso going the same way? Or do you see something else happening? No, I see. I see this the same way as um, Juliana Pena versus um, Amanda Nunes. Juliana looked so good in that first fight where she just took it to um, Amanda. She was crisp in the boxing, and then she was able to get her down and get a quick submission tap from a rear naked choke. I see this going almost the exact same way. Yeah, a long tenure champion who probably got a little bit comfortable. And maybe underestimated her opponent a little bit. Little bit. And that little bit was enough to get dethroned. Now she's gonna be hungry and want that that championship back and she's gonna come out and look um massively different. Now will that be enough to get the title back? We'll see. But I don't think this fight goes the same way. I think Shevchenko comes back and reclaims her form of glory. Same as Amanda Nunes did versus Juliana Pena in the second fight. I think this goes a little bit more... I think it ends up being closer. Because I think Shevchenko does come back, but she's a little more tentative than she was in the last fight. And I think Grasso comes back better trained and better prepared because she knows what she's dealing with now. So therefore, I think I think it's going to be a closer fight, but I think Shevchenko takes it back, though. But I also think it's probably going to be in Mexico. So Oof, let's altitude. go. Altitude, buddy. Yeah, that is isn't that place? Isn't that stadium like something crazy, like seventy five hundred feet elevation? Isn't that where we're, isn't that where Verdun beat Velasquez? Yes. Mm-hmm. Buddy, Ooh, listen, buddy. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, I believe it's going to be a similar fight. I believe this fight's going to go to decision if it's actual rematch. And with that said, decision, huh? mm-hmm. I don't know who's going to win that decision because I feel oh. this fight, Shevchenko is going to come back to Jacksonville, Florida and train once again. <laughs> this at time, the she'll Smiley's have help. gym. She'll have help once time. again. Don't once worry. again. Our young Eddie Bravo will probably keep us updated with pictures and whatnot. With the day to day. <laughs> and if you guys are not familiar with our young Eddie Bravo, that is our good friend RJ. <laughs> that boy is on his way oh, yeah. to a black belt eventually. He's going to attain he got it. He got about, he, listen, he he's going to attain it, bro. He's going to attain years, it. Bro. He's going to attain it. I feel I feel he's on his way to blue belt and then was it purple next? He's gonna get it soon and it's a, it's a long way to go though. They don't they don't hand out black belts, bro. It's a long I know, way I know, to go. I know, I know, yeah. but but I have faith in my boy. Me my, too. Uh little Eddie Bravo. He's gonna he's gonna be purple belt in no time, man. I'm like, I told y'all my boy got it. He gonna be a brown belt next, and but I told y'all my boy got brown belt. I'm telling you, man. Then he's gonna be a black belt and he's going to be passing them out in the McDonald's bags after that. God damn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but no, no, no. I he feel, seems, yeah, he seems real focused right now. Yeah, my boy's, my boy's focused. My boy's focused. He's, he's so, focusing on that like how he did with breaking and I feel he'll be, be focused. But with, shout, out to, uh, shout out to RJ for going for it. I, I definitely give credit for that, especially yes, sir. In, uh, 
That man got a dad. I mean, he's a, pa- a, pa- a father now. You know what I mean? Two times. Yeah. yeah. But um, like I was saying, I Alexa RJ. Grasso, though, I feel this fight with her and Valentina. Valentina's going to be here. So if her sister's here, Mark, it was nice being your brother-in-law. <laughs> Damn! And Valentina's sister's here. You boy. Wait, you, you, change, you trying to change quarterbacks? Man, you, you, you can have Valentina, bro. I got I got the sister. Deal, Good deal. Um, hey, Mark, nice being your brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, she she might be ready to hang them up and start, you know. Making What's her name? Pantera. Babies. She's Pantera too, bro. Shit, you know what I mean. How sick would it be if she, her and uh, Yair a had a fisherman, kid. man. I got her. Maybe, but, maybe uh, baby, baby but in all her. seriousness, I feel like uh, Valentina's grappling game really needs to improve because it is obviously a glaring weakness. And it that's what? where they're going to attack. That That's where they're attacking. That's where they're attacking. Wait, hold on. You, do you truly believe that's a glaring weakness? It is. Or that she may have, I, I think she just may have overlooked how good Grasso is on the ground. Well, her last Grasso, fight, but, yeah, her I don't last think fight, it was a glaring weakness. Her last fight, her grappling was also a issue. I think uh, it's as a result of um, all these girls watching that highlight reel of Jessica. They don't want to become Jessica I or, or, and be a. Uh, <laughs> oh, they don't want to get a kid. Yeah, I think that's, that's what it is. So, they think uh, they like there's better chance of like not being on a highlight reel by making it a grappling match. I think that's all. That's that's all that is. So what you're saying is they're they're like let's wrestle, <laughs> let's wrestle, let's, let's wrestle. That's what you're saying. Let's wrestle. That's what you're hey saying. Man, I got let's something. Wrestle. I got something. If you think about, you think back. Let's take a look back at 2023. Well, not look back at 2023, but a look um, back at 2022 and like the results of. Remember, we're looking what forward happened. today. Well, just, just really quickly, all of the long tenure champions that year got dethroned. Mm. Maru was a long tenure champion. Mm. Leon's now the champion. Shevchenko was a long ten- ch- tenure champion. Rosso is now the champion. Drew Adesanya, long tenure champion. That's what? Mm. Alex Pereira is now the champion. And then Francis Ngannou. Wasn't a long tenure champion, but he was the boogeyman for a while. Came champion, be- beat the guy who was the heavyweight goat, and Stephen Miocic knocked him out in the second round, and then decided to go Connor and want wants to box and do extra stuff. Was forced to vacate, and now John Jones is the champion. Is there any champion right now in this division that's long tenured? That Which you think division? has a chance to get thrown. The only guy that I can think of that uh, is has any tenure as champion is one guy, and that's Aljamain Sterling going up against Henry Cejudo. Everyone He's the only the champion, champion that I, I really feel has a shot at at losing his title. But Volkanovski, bro, I I I really. Really, really. I don't see. No, I don't see that happen. I don't see Volkanovski losing that title. I mean, Yair got to throw something maybe, crazy. Maybe Yair, maybe Yair can give him something. Maybe he's got throwing uh, something crazy, bro. He's got those like correct. some fucking left field upwards. Some elbow Korean zombie. Yeah. yeah, he's got those something crazy that you don't practice for. You get what I'm saying? That's the only way I see him. Ducking elbow. Other than that, oh, yeah. I see him getting double-legged and then just put on his back and punished for five rounds. He can do damage from his back. We've seen that. He can, can do but, damage from his back. But I don't think he could do it against Alexander. That's, that's true, and that's why we watch. That's that's, that's exactly yeah. why this fight is intriguing. I don't, look, I don't... If I had to put a coin up, get next on the sticks... And it was between watch between Volk, Pantera, or Tahudo and Aljo. I'm putting my quarter on the, on the machine with Aljo on it. Oh, you got next on Aljo. You got next one. Yeah, I think Tahudo has. I think Cejudo has a much better chance of dethroning Aljo than um, 
bulk losing Pantera. Well, I mean, so, if we're going to go that way. Sure. Oh, I'm saying. I think sure. that's the guy that has the – that's the only long tenure champion that has a chance to yeah, get cause, dethroned. Yeah, because we all have new champions from 2022, really. The all, only, the, all the long tenure champions. champions. champions Every, everyone who has more than two guys. title defenses – yeah, if you had more than two title defenses. No, one title defense. Because you <laughs> retained the title. That's what I'm saying. If you had more than two title defenses going into 2023, you are no longer champion except Aljo and Bulk. Yeah, I, literally. Like, dude. Mana Nunez. She only had, but she, she just count, got it bro. back. She don't count. She don't count. He had just gotten it back. She nah, she's oh. still featherweight champ. Correct. Man, that was more. The, we, we, man. You know he's right. He's right. Technically he's speaking, right. he's right. He's right. He's right. But it's they just like there's no. There's two people in the division. There's two. There's, there's, there's not even two people in the division. There is nobody on them rankings. There's, there's one person in that division. It's Amanda and Amanda. <laughs> you know, so technically she never really lost the bantamweight belt because she had bantamweight belt A and B. Right. So <laughs> she she never really lost it. You know, that's a roster. That's a roster of two. Right. It's Amanda and Nunez. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right, guys. Would have been cool to see if Kayla Harrison could come over though. That would have been cool. Let's let's go with this one because this it's coming up. It's actually coming up. We got twenty twenty three and beyond, right? So what right. happens if Pereira defends against? Style bender. What Ooh, happens? Because I feel division this division is, is so. I'm not going to say stale, but it's like it needs some new blood. Like it really does. It has new blood, though, Mo. I mean, Bo Nickel is a huge prospect. Hey, don't he's get looked, me started. Dominant, don't get me started. He looked, dominant in his, he looked dominant in his debut. I mean, obviously, he didn't go against a top 15 opponent, but damn, he looked great. He's there. He's there. He will take down this man that has the title right now at will. But well, see, I think even 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 as a rookie, he probably has the best wrestling in 85. He, 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 for sure. Yeah. For sure. Like, if you could tell me otherwise, please do it. Do Plessy's, only one guy, maybe? The only guy, the only guy that has the, the experience and the pedigree is Brunson. And give him the edge of versus Brunson. Brunson retired, didn't he? Yeah, I thought he just retired. Know. Well, then scratch that. We don't. We don't get no uh, thong song no more, right? No, no Cisco. No more Cisco. <laughs> yep, no more. And no more uh, yeah. looking in that. Wait, how you go from the, how you go none, from Super no Saiyan? How you go from Super Saiyan Brunson to, to Cisco? That the disrespect because they threw in the towel. <laughs> Uh, it's the fall Twice. hard. Manny, she got he was getting he was getting handled, dude. Like he was getting worked. They threw in the towel, bro, and they said, "Ooh, that dress so scandalous." Ooh, <laughs> that dress so scandalous. He Ooh, stayed dress. Super Saiyan one while everyone went blue. Yep. <laughs> so he's the 185 division isn't stale though because we got another another guy has some buzz. That's moving up to 185, and that Stop is Hamza Chamayev. Bro, like, if he, he looked impressive <laughs> in 185. You know what it, fight I want to see with him? It was impressive. Actually, I would love to see him versus oh. Marvin Vittori. Ooh, hey, I'll you take guys. <laughs> yes, Sloth. Yes. Okay. Vittori's, I think Vittori is so underrated because he's just not a likable personality like he doesn't have oh, like him, man. That, he doesn't have the charisma that like I love some him. of the other top I contenders have <clears throat> you do you do i love him i love him okay well you are in a minority i am and club because like he does not up. he doesn't the italian stallion does not have a ton of fanfare no he when it comes not. to the casual market my boy um, put on the shoes he's a <laughs> I think he's a, I think he's a uh, really good fighter though. I think he's he deserves to be in the top five of the middleweight division, and that I, I am intrigued by that matchup. That would be cool. That'd be, that'd be a good one to watch. It's just because yeah. like look, okay, 
say we're going 2023 20, forward, right? Obviously, we have Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pierre. It's in a few weeks. For a, a title yeah. fight, which is going to be their, what, how many times have these was fought already? That would be number four? four. Is this the four or five, right? Five? I think four? it's the fourth. Fourth one? Fourth. Think? Fourth. Two fourth. in kickboxing. Two, that, that would be the fourth one. So that would be the fifth time if they fought again. And these dudes. Wait, they, no, no, no. It would be it would be the fourth. It was two kickboxing and one in MMA. Okay. This would okay. be the fourth. Okay. Oh, this will be yeah, the fourth. That's what okay. I mean. This will be the, correct. Yeah. This will be the fourth match. Okay. In my opinion, and third it's, fight. Uh, three, it's 3 0. 3 0, Alex. 3 0, Alex, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like, he finished him twice. Yep. Twice. Too controversial in the. The so I game. really feel he wasn't like finished. he was on his way. He was knocking on the the, the shadow realms door. Oh no, he knocked him out, bro. He, he got him dummy. The shadow realms door. He got him dummy, bro. I mean, he was definitely wobbled. But I mean, to be fair, to be fair, he did have Alex knocking on the shadow realms door. In he did on. too. Yeah. Like, so, very so, I mean, first we, round. I don't see this as a lands as much of a landslide as everyone else does. I don't think that um, I don't even think Alex does because Alex is still looking at Izzy as a rival. If you watch Izzy's reaction video to um, oh, you seen that it? shit where he's like, Psst. yeah, well, what he was watching, he was watching the Kamaru. It was Israel reacting to Kamaru losing to Leon, and then in some Inception shit. Yeah. He had another v- reaction video of Alex watching Izzy <laughs> watching the video. I'm like, oh shit, we got like a picture and picture and picture. Yes. And yeah, that was that was something else. But Alex is still looking at Izzy as a dangerous threat, as he should. And I think um, most of the the casual MMA community has written Izzy off as like, okay, well Alex just has his number. But I don't think Alex believes that, and I damn sure know Izzy don't believe that. I think this is an intriguing matchup, and I do believe that this is a matchup of one of the long tenure champions that lost that could get it back. I didn't think that Leon. I thought I gave Leon the edge in this fight versus Kamaru last. I was like, in on his home turf in England, with that momentum and something to prove. He had to prove that that head kick was not a fluke, and to prove to everyone that that wasn't just um, a lucky press of the button. You know, like everybody's thinking, like, oh well, he was getting dominated the whole way, and then he landed that head kick. But if he didn't land that head kick, that Kamaru was on his way to a, a dominating victory, and I think that played into Leon's head. Like, I gotta prove to, to everyone that I'm. This wasn't a fluke. His methods a little controversial. However, he got the job done. So I have. Why does Chris look like Brian McClain right now to me? Just. <laughs> So random. I, just, yeah. I, I kept thinking it the whole way. I'm looking over at Chris. I'm like, when did Brian McClain get gas shoulders? But I, I do. I do have a question. Going with the uh, 2023 and beyond, can right? Hear, can you hear Chris? Can you hear Chris? Can you hear can me? Hear Chris? Can you hear Chris? The hell? Can you hear me? Say or? something real quick. Can you hear me right now? Or I see his lips moving, but I can't hear him. Okay. Can you, can you um, hear him, Mark? I can hear him. Yeah. All right. Um. So sure going with the side. whole like twenty twenty three and beyond, say Alex retains the title. Where do you see Adesanya going from here? Like, who does he fight after this? If if he ends up not getting the title back, where do you see who going? Sorry, uh, Adesanya. Um, <laughs> where do you see Adesanya? Um, Going inside the division. <laughs> Adesanya uh, will fight DDP. You think so? If he loses here, he'll fight DDP. And Robert Whitaker will probably fight Pereira. Pereira. I could agree I with that. that. Uh, I mean, he could go either that route or if I was him. Personally, I got one though. I would jump to light heavyweight and try to challenge Jamal Hill. 
Wait, what? Do you, who, who do you want to jump to light heavyweight? I was saying if if Izzy loses, I would try to jump to light heavyweight and fight Jamal Hill. Wow, that's a that's 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 a, that's a quite that's quite a leap. Um, you're throwing some variables in saying, here. Good, wait, hold on, wait, 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 no, 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 no. I think it's the other way around. I, I think, think he goes down. Alex Pereira. Yeah, I think, I think no, 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 no way. No, you think, think Izzy no, goes no. 170? Yes. No I way he'll he make weight. Down, man. I think he can There's make There's no way he can make 170. I think I mean, he it's, can it's, make Wait, hold on, it's not impossible. He's not a huge middleweight. No, he's not. He already no. skinny, though. Exactly. <laughs> I think he might be able to make 170. I mean, it's it's possible, but that, that that's a okay. I think it's a much easier stretch to see Alex Pereira going up. To I can go, see that happening. Jamal. So yeah, I can see that happening. Alex going. Alex oh going no, no, that's to gonna fight. happen. That's gonna happen. If Pereira, yeah, right? That's what I'm saying, Alex, wins, Alex is a huge one. And Jamal wins. I can see yeah, him see going happening. up. I can see him going up the challenge for the title, and maybe even a, if he keeps the belt, maybe do a champ champ type thing. And trying to go up against Jamal Hill if um Yuri Prohaska isn't ready. So let's say uh, mm-hmm. Alex goes in and he quickly starches Izzy in the first round or something like that, and he takes no damage. I can see him going up and matching up with <clears throat> excuse me matching up with Jamal Hill for like a a champ champ type thing, type deal, um, which would be a nice little international fight week deal. Have Brazil versus team versus USA. Add that in with um. Kobe and Leon, that would be an awesome uh, international fight week package. But um, no, I don't. I don't see Izzy moving up to two hundred five. Even if he loses, I think Izzy stays at one eighty five. I don't see a reason why not. Because if Alex does move, if Alex wins and moves up, why would he not? I don't think Alex can make championship weight for the next two years. I think that's that's. I don't know, but that's out of the question. He's I think it's too early for him to move up, though. Why, why so? I, I just besides beating, so his whole career and his whole popularity right now, which isn't much to be honest, he's still not like a star star, is all based off Izzy. He has no footing of his own. So besides beating Izzy, going up to one or two oh five. That fight isn't as intriguing as you think it would be, but Mark, if you're, you're right, Mark, he, he is riding the he is riding the wave of being a guy that was able to take out Izzy multiple times. However, if he does it again, especially if he does it in impressive fashion, let's say he goes out there, cracks Izzy with a left hook, knocks him out in the first round, you don't think he becomes a bona fide star? Nah. Not not yet. No? No, not really. No, not, not on a not on a pay per view main event against one of the one of the best middleweights. You know, is he at the point? At, is he still considered one of the best middleweights ever? No, I agree with that. I agree with that. But I'm just saying. I think I think right now that's that's all he has on him. Like he has no other resume spots on him. And I honestly think that if he defends it once, like I think Robert Whitaker wins that. I think. Most you of think, the middleweight division, think, like Duplessis, Plessis probably beats him. Uh, oh, we didn't even talk about Duplessis because Duplessis uh, is another middleweight guy who's on the um on the rise. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking like the guys that would be contenders for him. I think his stardom goes away real quick. Maybe I, I, I can see Robert Whitaker. You got you. I can see Whitaker getting because uh, Whitaker's not just um, tough. He's also very crafty, very fast. Mm. He can. Um, he has all the skills. Um, I can see it being Whitaker. I'm not sure if Duplessis can do it yet because Duplessis took some shots against Brunson and had him wobbled. And if Alex puts his hands on you, buddy, those shots that wobbled him are putting you to sleep. Well, I mean, Brunson, that, that's his bread and butter. If he lands those shots on you, you're supposed to go to sleep. So the fact that he survived that should – should give him credit of like he has a decent chin. True, uh, uh, true. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you credit for that. Um, however, Brunson is known to be very lackadaisical defensively, putting his chin in the air once yes. he gets a guy hurt. And I think that's kind of um, what led to the, the shifting of the tide in that fight. He did have um, Dirkus hurt. I'm, I might be butchering his name. Sorry, my South African brother. And I don't want to butcher your name, but 
Um, and I, I think he definitely had opportunities. Brunson, by he, I mean he had opportunities to get to to get Duplessis out of there, and he didn't take advantage of those. I don't think Alex makes that same mistake. Yeah, if Alex gets you hurt, you're gone. You're out of there, buddy. I'm just. I, I guess uh, the the fights that I think are winnable for him are the ones that aren't really in title contention right now. Like, I think he has a decent chance against Paulo Costa, but Paulo Costa ain't in the title mix right now. Jerry Cannonier would be an interesting fight, and I think he probably could win that one. I but think beats, I, think, I think he beats Jared. I think he beats Jared. I think he beats Vittori. I don't know if he. I think I would give the edge to Whitaker. I would yeah. give the edge to Bo, but Bo's not in title contention right now. But however, Bo can get fast tracked. Bo could. Bo could get fast tracked. Come on, like you, you give, you give. If they, if Bo, because he's saying that Bo isn't saying he wants to take the slow approach and go through all the. He's saying he he can win the title now, and mm-hmm. he has the he has the everything that is required to get the quote unquote in a white privilege card. Hold up, hold up, hold up. He's American. Bo? He's young. He's marketable. And if 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 he t- if Bo is to take, let's say Bo takes on someone like like right Marvin Vittori, right? And he he takes a, the Marvin Vittori fight. He goes out there, finishes Bo, uh, finishes not Bo, sorry, finishes Marvin in the first round, falls out for the championship. Did not get it. He could get a title fight at no. that point. Money. That's I don't see why not. I don't see. I don't see why not. He can get fast track. Yo, if he beats, if he smokes anybody in the top ten in the first round, he might get an instant title shot. I think so. I mean, he he has all the buzz. He has the American um, like, I can like he would be the new Captain America. Right? He is Captain. So if you American. give. You give him <laughs> if you give him say someone like um, like I said I think Vittori would be the perfect matchup to give him someone who's a legitimate title contender. And if he goes, I want my team him against Paulo. But Paulo is not a true eighty five anymore. Paulo is looking at two hundred five, and I think that we should be talking about Paulo more in a, in that breath, being a two hundred five contender as opposed to eighty five. I don't know if he's against Paulo Marvin can, either. But, Going back, you, don't, you don't want to? I, I don't mind seeing him against Marvin. Paul Mar- Marvin's a true 85er. Marvin or doesn't DDP. have issues making Or even well, that, that's that's a, Oh, we just made that we just made that case um when you were out that um Dirk is um Duplessis can definitely be in that contention mode. Like he can be somewhere in the title picture if he were to get another notable win. Oh I uh, I mean it's probably gonna be Marvin versus DDP. DDP versus um Cannoneer. So that, what that fight gets Bo good. Nickel? Yeah. What fight gets Bo Nickel that, into that the top fifteen? He's got two. He's got two. Whatever fight he fights next, it'll put him in top mm. fifteen. And then after that, For sure. His <laughs> next fight after that, it'll be like contender top five. It'll put him in the talking top about five. Bo. He's talking about Bo, right? Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then after that, he's definitely fighting for his title. So he's got maybe two, three fights, and then he's maybe. fighting for the title. I would say two, 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 might, two might be enough. Well, They're gonna put one him be enough. Uh, Kelvin Gastelum. So two would definitely get there. Nah, he won't fight no Gastelum. He's gonna fight somebody in the top fifty. Oh, Gastelum is fifteen. He's yeah, gonna G- fight Gassum somebody in the top fifteen. Honestly, yeah. you never know. He might end up fighting Israel. If Israel loses, is that that'd be Bo? crazy? Think he would fight Israel before he fought a guy like Marvin, or before he fought a guy like Jared Cannonier? You never know. I mean, it's not impossible. I'm just saying that's a guy. No, he's going to fight in- somebody in the bottom half of the top fifteen. Then after that, I would you never. Know. I would think it would be somebody in the bottom half of the top five. Because if you look at the top five roster, we got Strickland, we got Vittori, we got Cannoneer. Those are like three guys who don't have dates who can match up and test Bo. 
Don Strickland can definitely do it because Sean has some wrestling pedigree. He has um, a good volume. He's a legit top five contender. And then, you know, Cannoneer is kind of more of a balance, has a balanced approach. Vittori also has kind of a balanced approach. So these are all legit top five title contenders who they were to stave off this hype train can make a case for getting a title shot. And on the flip side of that, if Bo beats them, he definitely can make a case to uh, for the strap. It can happen. Definitely can. And I'm here for it. Um, I like. I, I was impressed by his first first um, fight in the UFC outside of the Contender Series. I think he would he would make. He, there's a lot of buzz around him, and we. I think we. As old school fans, Mo, me and you, I think we kind of discount, I know at least I do, discount how much weight that buzz accounts for. It accounts, I think it accounts for a lot more these days than it did before. You can definitely talk yourself, market yourself into title picture now, without question. You definitely can with the whole market about entertainment with the whole sure. just in general but I feel this dude Bo Nickel man he's good he's really good might be more than he might be more than just hype yes I don't, I don't wanna I don't wanna yeah. give him that I don't wanna claim I don't wanna give it to him off of just like what I've seen so far but what I have seen so far has been impressive and I know that I'm not easily impressed by prospect. It took me a while before I can give Amzat Chimaev the credibility that I think most others gave him. That's it took me a while true. for Shavkat. It took me a while for Shavkat too. You know, I, I and it took me a while for um. I still don't even think he's out of the realm of poss- possibility at heavyweight once he recovers from his injury. But, um, a, a heavyweight that we talked about a lot, who's very very athletic. Very, very um, talented. Um, I'm losing his name right now. The the, the British guy. Um, oh, Tommy Espino. Tommy Espino. Espino. I think if he bec- comes back from that injury, oh, he yeah. has some. Um, he can he can um, provide some entertaining fights at um, heavyweight. And I would love to see him versus Cyril Gunn. Yes, 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 for sure. I'll be. I think that'd be a fun fight. But you think he gets that fighting in Cyril Speaking Gunn? Heavyweights, don't we have a, a heavyweight ticket soon with um, Curtis Blades and um, pa- is it Pavlo- pa- Pavlo- Pavlovich? Yeah, yeah. Mm, that's intriguing. Because what if um, what if uh, the fireman isn't ready? Oh, Stipe. All right, so if Stipe is not ready. What, what if Blades wins you and think, then, um, uh, Stipe isn't ready? We get Stipe Jones. Do we get Blades Jones? Or do you get Pavlovich Jones? Pavlovich did um, weigh in as the backup fighter for the Jones and Gone fight, right? He weighed in? He weighed in as a backup fighter. What's, what's that? Pavlovich weighed in as the backup fighter for the Jones and Gone fight. Oh. Nah, yeah, we'll, get Jones, uh, we'll get Jones um, Lewis just because entertainment. Jo- oh, Derek Lewis. Lewis Kalef a loss? <laughs> Stop yeah. it. If Lewis Stop gets it. a title shot, come on. Stop if, if, if Derek Stop Lewis, it. I will say this, I'll say this right now. If Derek Lewis gets a title shot coming off that loss, that devastating loss to Pavlov, he gets a lot. Then that Dana White privilege card to go out the window. If Derek Lewis gets a title shot. Dana we White can, privilege. We can, oh wipe, my God. we can wipe that off the map. We can say no, 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 no. <laughs> It's just, it's just star power. There's no way. But, I mean, well, there's, there is a way. <laughs> but I just don't see it happening. I don't see Derek getting a title shot coming off of a loss. No. I was just joking. It, it would most likely be uh, Pavlovich or uh, Curtis Blades. Blades, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Blades Blade is, I mean, outside of, I mean, Gano's not here anymore. He ain't here no, no more. That's pretty much the only thing that kept Blades out of the title picture is those knockouts to Francis. Outside of Francis, he's looked damn good. Derek Lewis put him away too. Yeah, oh, 
Yeah, that was Bam. It, uh, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. That's, a, that's an intriguing matchup because um, Sir, is it Sergey Pavlik? Am I thinking of mm-hmm. Bro, yeah. There's, there's two, there's Sergei two Spivak Sergei. and Sergey yeah. Pavlik. Let me uh, tell you, though. Mix. Obviously, he looks right, good. dude, it's like he's getting hit hard as fuck. Like, can you fault him? Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Bro, it's, 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 that's, the, it's that's, the heavyweight as that's the heavyweight division. So why the heavyweight division so prestigious? Because one shot can change everything. Obviously. Uh, way more than in any other division. So that's why you don't have these long tenure champions. Like, you, like the, a long tenure championship is like two defenses. Three. Three. Steep, eh? Three. Three. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you got three, three defenses. But like, then you got, ten. like, Anderson, Mighty Mouse. GSP. Nine and eleven. Yeah, and you eight. got these dudes that are defending their belts forever. John Jones, exactly. John Jones. Okay, well, Kamaru had what six or five or six, right? He was the next guy. Two. Yeah, he was the he, next guy up. Kobe, two versus Kobe, two versus Ray, one versus um, Gilbert. That's five. Who else do you defend against? That's it. That's it. So he had, he had, so he had. Did he fight Woodley twice or once? Once, once to win the he took it from He took it from Woodley. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he took the belt from Woodley, defended against Kobe twice, defended against Jorge twice, defended against um, Gilbert once, once. So he had five defenses. Okay, so five. That's that's still strong. That's still strong and, compared to this day and age, but. You got like dudes out there like uh, uh, Volkanovski that's defending that title. Well, he's so Izzy's Izzy was Izzy's was Marvin Vittori twice. He got um, no, all once. He only defended against Whitaker. Vittori once. First fight wasn't a title fight then, right? No, no, mm-hmm. no. Okay. So he, question: he Vittori once, Whitaker once. He can near once. Yoel once. Mm-hmm. Um, Costa. Costa once. What else we have? Mm-hmm. Can near? Was, was 205. So that isn't that that wasn't a title Three, defense. Four. So he has five title defenses at eighty five. So who's the current champ right Gaslam now that has the most the, defenses? He got the belt from Gaslam. Technically, and, yes. Technically speaking, he won the belt in the, the interim belt from Gaston. He counts it. Did, did no. he fight Whitaker twice? The champion that has the most title defenses currently is probably Amanda Nunes. <laughs> Volk. Honestly. That, that's Volk, unbeaten. right? Oh, Volk probably is the one that has the most title defenses as current champion for the division. Because uh, Amanda's title defense is at 45 was only. She only has two, right? I don't know, but I'm pretty sure the Bantamweight ones uh, <laughs> got nullified after she lost to uh, Pena. 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 Right, right. Pena stopped that streak. Mm-hmm. But well, I think reality, the longest tenure champion, longest tenure champion is, um, is Volk right now. Nobody's yes. on the streak besides him and Aljamain. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and Aljo, but all, and Aljo has what three? <laughs> but I'm I'm glad to say this right now, as Americans, we got some titles. Yes, I don't. It's know been a minute. minute. I don't Getting know where y'all want to go. I don't know how far y'all want to go, high and low. We're getting back on the scoreboard, but we got the heavyweight. That's the only one that matters. The one that everyone looks at. When you look at that, once if you have the, if you we, we would assume. No, I'm saying in the general. Bro, can beat every I'm saying other in champion. general, we got like, we got a lot of titles. If you you count in Americas, but United oh, States. Oh, oh Americas! No, oh, oh, in Central America. Americas. We got we got you a lot. But if you, you if can't you count, count North America, America, we got two, three. <laughs> I don't even think we can count North America. We can only go by the USA. Well, if USA, you go by USA, do we, we only have what two? We got north? three. We still got three. We 
still got three. Who was the third? Oh, Jamal Hill and Al Jermaine. <laughs> yeah. Am we I got we got John Jones, Jones Jamal. Jamal Hill. John Jones, and Jamal Hill, Al-Jermaine. and Al Jermaine. That's the three. We got three. Yeah. USA. Yeah, we in there. We in there, bro. Right. USA. We in there. What's next for Jamal if um, Yuri isn't available? Because I don't know if Yuri will be available. Uncle Live. Live? Oh, is he still with the UFC? Mm-hmm. Really? That, after that Jan Blahovich fight, he didn't sound too pleased. But, I mean, it would be Jan might get another shot at it. But Uncle Live probably. Who else is on there? Like, let's see. Let me go back to the rankings real quick. If Anthony Smith can pull off another win, I don't know. Light heavyweight's kind of uh. Dismal at this point. They might get a boost though. They might get a boost in um in talent if um both Costa and Pereira move up. All right, gentlemen. I feel like today was a good part two for our little part one and dragging on for our 2023 and beyond if you guys have anything in the closing statements which we will do right now do you have any they nobody cares oh tomorrow they will it will Band and white champion for 2023 closing out. Who who is it? All Jermaine Sterling. Chris. Band and white champion. Uh, Cejudo. Woo, Cejudo. I think I think he beats Cejudo. I um, like I like Mirab if he gets a title fight at the end of the year to be the champion ooh. at Bantamweight. You're like saying Mirab. you're saying at the end That's of 2024. 23. 23 this year. Uh, in the 2023, I'm sorry. So if uh, going into 2024, you're saying Mirab is t- title holder? At, at the close of this year, yes. As long as there's no... It's, Never mind. That's possible. Very possible. That's only if he gets the title shot. Yeah. He will. And there's no I mean, injury. If, if or Aljo vacates or moves up, then he will. Yeah, I'm calling it right now. Mirab, what about you? 2023 what about you, Mark? champion. How crazy Close the question. Who, who closes twenty twenty three as the champion at um Bantam? Twenty twenty three? Close this year. Who who is who is the last champion at Bantamweight today? Or not today, but the end of this, this year. year. Sudo. Woo! That's I'm going to that's Mira, super <laughs> I'm going with Mirab. I'm going with Mirab. Okay, I I, I say, um, I, how awesome would it be for Jersey if all Joe moves up, dethrones? I don't see that dethrones, happening. And dethrones, oh, hey, just hit me out, brother. Dethrones <laughs> vote, and Mirab takes the title, bantamweight, and they have two champions. And it's good Jersey. for them. It's good for them. I don't see that. You know who else is good for? You know who else is good for? Uh, America. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They have, uh, that would move American champions up to five. All right, guys. On that note, I'm pretty sure we didn't do this yesterday, but on that note, zip it up. Zip it and out. Zip it out. That's right. How much boy? That wasn't, do that. Um, Bye-bye. That wasn't Chris Weidman over Pereira. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit! Now we're reaching. Now we're reaching. 
I thought we were zipping up and zipping out. Oh my god. Oh, why are you, why are you doing oh that? we're not done? Like that. Do that, I just want to throw it out there. <laughs> we're supposed to be done. We're supposed to be done. Oh, okay, okay, okay. To our listeners, like zip it up and zip it out. Thank you. Like, like subscribe. subscribe. Peace.